Hello everyone, my name's Joe Fernandez and I'll be going over a general guide on ways to survive when your healer is stuck in crowd control. CC on healers is a pivotal part of arena games used by every comp to have an easier time landing kills on the DPS. This guide will provide essential steps that every player can take in order to increase their chances to survive during this time. Now throughout this guide, we'll be referencing commentaries that can be found on our site. If you are interested in watching the full commentaries seen in this guide, along with hundreds of other exclusive commentaries and matchup guides, be sure to head on over to skillcap.com forward slash wow and sign up today. Before we get into the detail of these setups, here are the two steps generalized that you want to perform when your healer is in crowd control. Number one is to reposition yourself as the offensive setup is happening. Then you want to disrupt their offensive setup. Positioning can immensely help when it comes to surviving an offensive setup when your healer is in crowd control. The best way of making this happen is usually by using mobility cooldowns in order to get to a more ideal position. Every class has access to mobility cooldowns that you could use to get out of trouble. This allows you to avoid a lot of pressure during the CC on your healer, allowing you to live, saving your life or even important defensive cooldowns, which will make it difficult for the enemy team to kill you. Let's take a look at how Mystic repositions himself when his healer gets stuck in CC. Yeah, again, healer gets uh, CC'd, I'm on the pillar on my horse, ready to heal myself. I do hodge the mage right there out of the healer's line. So that's a really good play, um, prevents myself from dying, stops the DR Polymorph from coming. Uh, you can see there my Priest was able to line aside it, and now he Guardians me on it. Uh, I'm going to try and cast some heals, but unfortunately, counter spell is ready. So. Okay, so let's dive deeper into this. Mystic uses his Divine Steed in order to reposition at the pillar, being the quickest way to avoid the enemy team's pressure, making it difficult for the mage to slay him. Doing this kept him alive better, as well as by his healer enough time to get the Guardian Spirit off, which otherwise could have cost his Divine Shield. He continues to line of sight the mage as best as he can, constantly repositioning until he knows he's safe from danger and can look to play aggressive again. Here's another example showing Mystic surviving the opener against a Rogue Mage Priest. That's a CC. Uh, I could have stopped that by using my stun on the Mage. A uh, bit of a mistake not to do it, especially as I was, uh, as I ended up going in anyway to stun him half just to live. Um, but regardless, my goal at this point is going to be to try and live without using my Divine Shield. That's the main thing. We also won't be able to use Roar of Sacrifice because we're saving it for Combustion. So I'm basically forced to live by myself here. Uh, I use my Shield of Vengeance, which is a huge cooldown nowadays. Uh, and all I'm doing is lining the Mage. He's going to get his second Polymorph there. He'll probably get a third Polymorph as neither of us can stop it. But then now with that gone, it's going to be my turn to run to the Shaman and that will allow him to keep me alive. So all the major CC is gone, then I go back to my healer. There's no CC left for my healer. Um, their Priest also already used their Fear as part of the setup, so uh, they have absolutely no way to CC my Shaman right now. As you can see, Mystic repositions himself instantly, taking account that the Mage will get crowd control on his healer anyway. Since the Sheep lands on his healer, Mystic stays at the pillar to line upside the mage during the crowd control. This reduces the pressure on him as the mage can't get any of his damage off. When the CC ends on his healer, he runs back to his healer so that he can begin recovering him, as well as Mystic healing himself, surviving the opener of an RMP. Here's another example from my point of view against a fire mage Ellie Shaman. And I'm just, you know, in a pursuit to live here, and that's why I heroically back because I see there's a sheep on my healer, and Trend just gets hexed as well. I just need to live at this point, and I mean, I could have traded out the parry as a safety measure, but because I use the reflect instead, reflect is going to be better than parry in this situation. Reflect is super powerful against double wizard cleaves like this that rely on casted damage to get a win. And so now I'm in a position where I heroically back so I can line aside both the mage and the Ellie shaman and then just don't take damage. At this point, even with repositioning or playing well defensively, 
Sometimes you may find yourself going down, thinking, what more can I do? I reposition well and I use my defensive cooldowns well, but I still end up dying. This usually means that you may have to disrupt their offensive setup as well, being another key step into reducing the strength of an enemy's offensive setup. Disrupting the enemy team's setup can require a number of different things, but the main goal remains the same. Mostly, you'll be looking to deny follow-up crowd control on your healer, or looking to reduce their pressure during their offensive setup. Performing either of these, or both, will be the best way to disrupt the setup, as it lowers the chance of you dying whilst your healer is in crowd control. Denying crowd control will allow your healer to get out, kill you with ease, or save you with a defensive cooldown. Reducing their pressure during the setup could end up saving your life, or even hold on to defensive cooldowns. Either way, making you live and survive the opposition. To do this, you'll be using defensive cooldowns or crowd control abilities you have access to in order to disrupt their offensive setup. Let's take a look at my example from earlier, taken from the same clip, after I repositioned myself to live the setup on me. And so that's why I did a sweet banner on the Hodge. I knew exactly that was going to happen. I placed them in a position where they can't kill it as well. And I was maybe a bit lucky with the range. I think if I was a little bit further, the war banner may have not been in range. It's quite a, I think it's like a 15 yard range, so it's quite small and I was a bit lucky to get that off. But now that the war banners happened on the Hodge, they won't be able to chain the lasso. So you can still see he gets pumped a lot. They have an absurd amount of pressure, but here's another example. Looking back into Mystic's game against Arcane Disc whilst he was repositioning well. Healer. But yeah, again, healer gets uh, CC'd. I'm on the pillar on my horse, ready to heal myself. I do hodge the mage right there out of the healer's line. So that's a really good play. Um, prevents myself from dying, stops the DR polymorph from coming. Uh, you can see there, my priest was able to line aside it, and now he So even Mystic himself said this was a really good play from him. By using Hammer of Justice on the mage out of line of sight, it disrupted the setup by delaying the DR Polymorph on his healer, which allowed his healer to sneak in a Guardian Spirit, denying the kill or Divine Shield usage from Mystic. Being the DPS that isn't being focused can usually be the person that can play more during this time, in which case you want to be impactful too. So you should look to disrupt their offensive setup as well so that your partner can live. Let's see how this happens here whilst Lonto is stuck on a blind with crowd control on the other DPS. After seeing the sap land on his monk, Zipai goes for a hex on the mage and lassos the rogue. This forces the rogue's trinket, but the mage is still stuck in the hex, disrupting their offensive go. Smoke Bomb was also committed, prompting Z Pi to run in and knock the Rogan Mage in an attempt to stop as much pressure as possible. After that, the CC ends on their healer, allowing him to hold onto the trinket even after a long crowd control chain. Without this disruption, Lonto would have most likely had to use his trinket on the blind, making him vulnerable to a later setup from the Rogue Mage Priest. Due to Zipai's disruption, Lonta keeps his trinket, making it more difficult for the Rogue Mage Priest to land a kill. That covers the key steps to survive when your healer is stuck in crowd control. Hope you guys enjoyed this guide, and if you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them down below. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you next time.